welcome to episode 216 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name is Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 7th of July. So welcome everybody, I hope you all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some sewing, one or two confessions, oh dear. <laughs> Absolutely don't need any more fabric but just couldn't resist and there's also some books as well I want to show you. I have some information on my shop, a couple of things that are coming up and a little appearance from Jensen at the end of the podcast with a handmade outfit on and I'm going to actually show you in the sewing section as well. So we have had a couple of make-alongs come to the point where it's time to draw for prizes. So the craft 20 a day is going to go on all year but I said before I draw for prizes every quarter so end of June was the last quarter and I've got two prize winners. So the posts number 779 to 862 on Ravelry were the ones sort of for this quarter but there were 12 posts on Instagram so I then numbered those from 862 to 874 to make it all go in together and then I drew two random numbers from the total numbers so the winners are M's Little Nest from New Zealand and Tree Source LTD from Canada so congratulations both of you I have messaged you on Ravelry already so hopefully you've got that message and can you send me your full address and full name on a personal message um, either on Ravelry or email me on Craft House magic at gmail.com and I'll get those prizes sent out to you. So there's also another make along that's come to an end that's the Craft House Magic Spring Shawl Along 2022 and that just finished at the end of June and we've got two winners for that so I did the same as I did for the Craft 20 a day draw where I'd got 152 posts on Ravelry and there were 21 posts on Instagram I added those posts to the numbers at the end of 152 and those went up to 173 then. I've got two Two random numbers I drew out of those and the first winner is Knit X Pearl 54 from Ravelry and that's somebody from the UK and then Lulu by Design from Instagram so congratulations to both of you I have messaged both of you already so hopefully you've got that message but if you haven't don't forget to personal message me with your full name and address so I can get those prizes sent out right so let's get on to the good stuff shall we first of all we've got some knitting and I have been knitting like mad on my sparkle cardigan this is a pattern by Hokey Locatelli and it is supposed to be a lace cardigan but I am doing it so it's plain rather than lace so I have knitted it before and I knitted it in my pretty and pink colourway but this time I decided to do a sort of bluey green and this one is called Ocean Drive and this is a merino silk and yak base and I just love this colour and this yarn. It's got grey tones um, that are from the natural colours of the yarn underneath and they are showing through really nicely. So this is the front of the cardigan. It is rolling up at the sides because it is stuck in stitch um, but you get the idea that I've knitted quite a lot so from that stitch marker is where I knitted from the last podcast and considering that there's quite a few stitches on there <laughs> to get round my bum um, I have done quite a bit. Now I have measured this up against my other cardigan and it's actually the length that the stockinette stitch was um, on the other cardigan but I might do it slightly longer for this one just because it'll make it more wearable with jeans as well just another inch or so and then I'm going to go into the rib I was going to do some sort of small lace detail at the bottom but I've got a bit carried away <laughs> and I think I've knitted too far to sort of introduce it I'll have a think though I might be able to introduce something small for the last inch or I might do two inches um, I've had quite a few messages from people saying um, what about the gauge because I did I'm doing the same needle size um, with the four ply yarn as I did with the lacy version and people were saying because it's stock in etch stitch rather than lace it probably won't stretch out as much because the lace makes it slightly bigger the yarn is very slightly thicker than the other four ply yarn I used and also I've lost quite a bit of weight since I um when I knitted it the first time so I think that's going to be absolutely fine I keep measuring in it and trying it on and the body itself is going to fit perfectly 
I think what I will do is for the arms so previously on the other version I did I actually went down a few sizes for the arm um, when I when I picked up the stitches for that and started knitting it so I might go down less sizes if that makes sense so that it isn't so tight on the arms because it will be a little bit snug on me because it is the stockinette stitch but the rest of the body is is fitting really nicely at the moment um, so that's how far I've got with that one so not too far till I finish the body and I wanted the sleeves and then the next stage will be to pick up stitches around the neckline and do the ribbon around the neck so I think that maybe in a couple of weeks I'll have finished this cardigan because I am going to do three quarter length sleeves so I'll just show you what the yarn looks like in the cake that's ocean drive on merino silk and yak and this is my own hand dyed yarn and actually I was going to show you some plans I've got for the next project before I show you my next work in progress. So I have actually caked up four skeins of the Merino Silk and Yak in the different colours that I've got and I'm going to get um, Adam's mum Liz to knit a shawl for me in these four colours. Now let's see if I can hold them up all at the same time. <laughs> Bit of a juggle. I'm going to use those four colours together. So I'm going to knit the Frank shawl by Hoki Locatelli and hopefully I'll be able to put the Frank shawl right next to where I'm holding up the yarn so that you can see what I'm aiming for. I'm going to have the gold colourway be the one that's the stripes through all of the colours and then the other three colours be in each of the sections if that makes sense. So I'm really excited about having that. It'll basically be a sort of sample for the shop that I can wear <laughs> and it'll also be lovely. So I'm really excited for Liz to start knitting on that for me. And after I've been looking on Ravelry, looking at all these different patterns, I can't stop thinking, oh, I want to cast this on, I want to cast that on. So many things that, that I want to knit and not enough time. So the next thing that I've been working on is another stockinette project to be honest. I've been starting to finally get round to watching Stranger Things so I need something that's nice and easy to knit. So I've cast on a pair of socks and I thought that this would be appropriate because we've got the Craft House Magic Summer Sock Along started at the beginning of July and this will go till the end of August so you have plenty of time to enter and I've just started a nice simple sock because you don't need any pattern when you've got beautiful stripes like this and this is a self-striping yarn by Giddy Yarns and I picked this up from the East Anglia Fibre Festival not so long ago and I've got that cast on and, the, and then it's already really flying by I only actually cast this on a couple of days ago and, and I haven't had loads of knitting time in the last couple of days so I'm really pleased with how that's come on so the yarn in the cake looks like this isn't that stunning I love how Helen winds these balls how she winds them so beautifully and just the colors are gorgeous so that's the main ball but it came with a little mini which is like a turquoise which is lovely and this was called the cherry blossom colorway and I just love cherry cherry blossom and I love these colors I'm really pleased that I picked this one this is a 50 gram of the striping and a 20 gram contrast but uh, Helen does sell hundreds gram with 20 gram um, sets as well if you want a larger set but I thought 50 grams will be just enough for what I need and I'm loving how it's coming along it's very very summery and very appropriate for a summer sock along <laughs> I am using 2.5 millimeter higher higher sharp needles and these ones are actually the interchangeable set that I've purchased so they've got the pink cable which is for the needles that are 2.5 millimeters and below that's the miniature size cable well I, I have got like a set that I've got but you can get fixed ones as well but these are my favorite as well as the fixed ones um, for sock knitting really I do sometimes use DPNs um, but I do tend to go back to the magic loop method so that is all I've got of knitting to show you but I do have some sewing to show you so so I have been working on some baby clothes for Jensen unfortunately I don't have a little miniature Barbara but I do have Jensen who will show you what it looks like on at the end of the podcast but this is the Wee Lap Tea by Patterns for Pirates and this is a free pattern. This goes up to 12 months and I have actually sewn up the 12 month version because I'm thinking that Jensen is growing absolutely like mad. He's seven and a half months old now and he is just growing like mad and he's currently wearing 
um, sizes sort of 9 to 12 months from the shops but he does wear the reusable nappies so they do take a little bit more space than the throwaway ones so I've decided I'd go for the 12 month size and see how that fits to be honest that to me doesn't look very big for him so I'm hoping it'll still fit <laughs> So this is made out of some gorgeous cotton jersey fabric that my lovely friend Helen gifted to me and this is just one of the ones she gifted to me and it's got these gorgeous prints on sort of wildlife it's got some crocodiles and some rhinos and elephants and all sorts of things on there I've done the pattern fabric on the front and on the back and then I've done contrast arms and then where it laps over I've done the contrast as well on there you could do a contrast cuff and the bottom of the top but i just thought i'll try it out um, and see what it's like in this fabric just plain um, and just turned over and stitched down on my cover stitch machine for the cuffs and the bottom and then if i like if i think the pattern's good i can then use it for little scraps you see and add um, and combine different fabrics and use little scraps to make the cuffs etc so this is lovely and easy to make. The only thing that I thought was a bit tricky was when you're sewing the neck bands on, so you're supposed to sort of stretch it. Um, you sew it on the front and then the back as separately. Um, you have to sort of stretch it round this rounded shape that goes over around the neck and you do have to stretch it quite a bit so it is a little bit fiddly but well worth it because um, if as long as you sort of I found that if you stretched the sort of binding piece um, as far as it'll sort of go it seemed to fit lovely um, so I'm really pleased with how that's come out and then you've got plenty of room to get the baby's head into the garment um, so I've I've, like I said I've done the 12 months one um, so I'm hoping that it will fit for at least for a little while <laughs> so Patterns for Pirates is the company who does that pattern and they also do the Petite Peg so I've done some trousers to match so I also have done the 12 months um, size and to be honest this doesn't look majorly large to go on him because of his big nappies that he has but I think that they'll be a little bit long for him now I did double them over twice at the bottom because I knew that they'd be a bit long but we shall see how they look on Jensen um, when I try them on at the end of the podcast but I just I do like this pattern and actually the pairs that I made for him that were sort of naught to three months he did wear quite a lot but I did make about seven pairs so each pair didn't get that much wear considering they were only naught to three months and he seemed to grow out of them in sort of a month and a half he not he didn't get three months wear out of them especially wearing the reusable nappies that he has so i'm really pleased that i've been able to make a little set for jensen and thank you so much to helen for sending me some lovely fabrics to make him some things and i finally got around to it she did actually send them me as soon as jensen was born but i've only just had a bit more sewing time so it was really lovely to spend some time sewing on those and i have lots of plans i want to try some more of the patterns for pirates patterns and also there's a few more of the sew over it baby patterns i want to try as well so watch out for those in the next few weeks so my next section is confessions oh dear i am very naughty so a friend of mine was selling some fabrics at my local quilt group that and i had to have a look at them and of course i got distracted and i thought oh yes i need some of those <laughs> so i bought four it wasn't too bad i could have bought a lot more so I picked these two up to go with a project that I've been working on for the block of the month for my local quilt group that we've been working on together and I've been using greys and turquoise fabrics so I thought that those two would be really nice to, to work with that and this is a Lynette Anderson fabric I noticed I'm not sure where this one is but it's got these beautiful leaves on I thought that would work well with that so those two have a purpose <laughs> but I saw these and I just thought oh wouldn't those be lovely for for a sort of natural landscape scene and this sort of looks like cork with bits of gold in it and there's a nice sort of neutral beige color that i thought would go with lots of things so those two were a bit of a naughty purchase but i still really like them there's a meter of these three and then half a meter of that one so i'm excited to have a go with using those as well so even though i've got enough 
you have to treat yourself sometimes. <laughs> So when my parents were here, after we'd been to Centre Parks, they came for a few days and stayed at our house. And we went out for one of the days to Sheringham. Now in Sheringham there is a little bookshop that sells sort of discount books that's down the main street of Sheringham. It's like a coastal town and we, we walked down there, had a look at the beach, had an ice cream on the beach and might have popped into the bookshop and purchased some books. <laughs> So this drew my, drew my attention straight away. It's like a modern quilt book and this was 5 .99 in that shop but I don't know how much it goes for online. I will see if I can link it um, from Amazon or somewhere. But I just thought, oh, isn't that lovely? I love these sort of modern shapes on the front. And then I've bookmarked a couple of other patterns that I thought were really nice. This one here, I just thought that that's just so effective with the sort of landscape that's been chopped up into sections. And this one, of course, I have to pick one of the patterns that's sort of turquoise colour. <laughs> But it's simple but so effective with those little notches into the square patterns. So I had that one. That's one of the books I picked up this four altogether. A bit naughty. <laughs> and there's another one, curved piecing. I thought that was really nice on the front. Um, and then dancing squares. I thought, oh, that looks really attractive. I'm not so keen on sort of red and black together, but the whole pattern, I think that could be adapted to one of the colour schemes that I really like and this pattern really drew me in I just love that not necessarily in oranges but how detailed that is and how sort of 3d it looks because of the sort of two tones of the same colours so I had to have that one then I saw this one and the, the front cover quilt drew my attention straight away there. Really love um, the fact you can actually use lots of scraps for this one. Um, and it's really attractive and brought together by sort of the, the main colour in the background. But there was other ones um, like these ones with crosses on that really drew me in. I love that. And this one I thought was really nice as well. So lots of potential um there are more patterns in these books but i've just chosen the ones that i that sort of attracted me the most um and hopefully inspire you to do a bit of quilting or whatever and when i saw this art embroidery um book i have got some other books that have sort of similar things to this um but i thought actually it'd be nice to see somebody else's take on it so it's there's little tiny bits of fabric that they've stitched on and around and painted the fabrics here and there's a couple of examples that I thought were really beautiful so this gorgeous landscape I like how it sort of overlaps the frame there with the flowers and there was another one towards the back that looked different but the same sort of thing just love that so I want to have a go at a little bit more sort of art quilts and things. So I will leave links to all these books that I've picked up um, if I can find them on the internet if you want to get hold of them. If you've seen it, a pattern you think, oh, I'd love to do that. Hopefully you'll be able to find the links in the description bar down below. So now onto my shop update section. So next month on the 1st of August I'm going to open the pre-orders for my advent calendars and I will let you know what the actual theme is for this year. I will also be releasing a bag and yarn sock set with a pattern as well so both of those will have patterns with them and I will give more details about it in next week's podcast so watch out for that. So for the monthly yarn clubs the power ballad sock sets and the mixtape minis those will be available available for August on the 22nd of July until the 31st of July and those will be shipped on the 12th of August. The 12th of August will be the shipping date for anybody who has already purchased a combination of the July and August, August clubs as well. So those will be going out and I will be releasing um, some more colourways at the end of this month as well. And finally over to you Jensen. So Jensen has got his little outfit on. Do you like it? <laughs> He's just been looking at the fabric and getting really excited. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he always looks at fabric. He loves it. He's always looking closely at my floral tops. I think he likes them. 
<laughs> so how what do you think the fit's like Jensen he's got hiccups <laughs> and he's also he's teething look you can see his mouth and his his chin a little bit <laughs> bless him but he always wants to stand up like this now bless him can you do a twirl Jensen <laughs> Does my bum look big in this, he's saying. <laughs> so he has got a reusable nappy on, so it does look, um, it, well, it just fits nicely, actually. So this is actually the 12 months. <laughs> oh, bless him, he's dribbling. Um, and it is just nicely fitting him now, so he's not going to have much wear out of them. He obviously needs to start wearing them straight away. The pattern actually only goes up to 12 months as well, so this is the largest size. So the, the seam allowance is supposed to be half an inch on these though, but actually I could make some more with the seam allowance just a quarter of an inch, so they'll be a little bit bigger. But this is the perfect size for him now, but I do like the pattern and I would make it again. But thank you very much Jensen! So thank you so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I shall see you in the next podcast. Bye!